for concentration to really work well, it must be accomplished by patience, another core value. Because concentration done with patience really leads us to the truth, to the true cause of things. But we also must keep our hearts clean, keeping only love in our hearts. No criticism is necessary, only love towards all. If a person behaves badly, if a person behaves in a way you don't approve, that's between them and God. Daskos was always emphasizing this point. I'm going to quote him again. Anyone wanting to be a psychotherapist or a healer is not allowed to criticize others. Mm -hmm. Because from the very moment he feels this tendency in his heart of criticizing, he is no longer fit, a fit instrument for the Holy Spirit to do the work. Because the one who makes the curing is the Holy Spirit and not the person anyhow. So he first must love without criticism, without choice. The suffer, suffering person for him is just a brother or sister, a father or mother. <coughs> he must have that attitude in toward all human beings with the work he's going to undertake. And then he said, take out of your hearts criticism, close your eyes to criticism, <coughs> and open your eyes to truth. <coughs> when Daskos was giving this lesson, I, I mentioned it the other day that somebody said, well, what about constructive criticism? He said there is one. There is no such thing. He says, it, that's just simply egoism in disguise. Mm -hmm. Criticism is criticism. And Christ said we are not to criticize others. Why? Because criticism creates negative elementals that hurt the person you're criticizing, and then they come back and lower your vibrations in hurting you too. And because we will be judged by the exact same degree of criticism and judgment we have given others. And again, the people we are criticizing need our love more than anybody. Now, sometimes trials and tribulations cause us to suffer a lot. But who's suffering? Is it our spirit, our soul? No, they're forever free. It's the little personality self-awareness that suffers. Sometimes it feels that our suffering is more than we can bear. And we say, I can't endure it anymore. I can't take this anymore. But the well-known statement is no one is tempted beyond their ability to endure it. God just will not allow it. God will allow the temptation, but will not allow it to be greater than any one of us can bear. This is a well-known truth, and the, but the quote continues. God will also provide a way of escaping the temptation. Because there's always, when we're facing temptation, there's something in us that can choose to accept it or not accept it. What is that something in us that can choose to n reject the temptation, not to accept it? Willpower. Willpower? Willpower of what? Of choosing. Of what? Our higher self. <coughs> no, it's actually the personality, the personality, but only when the personality is connected to the higher self. Oh. That's the point. And the personality is disconnected. It has no power to, over, mm -hmm. to choose against the temptation. It has to stay connected to the inner self. Because we've all felt, mm -hmm. we're all, we've all of us felt we're greater than just a little personality. And that is just simply us sensing that inner self. When we feel that, we're sensing the inner self. And when the personality uh, follows the instructions of the inner self, it can choose not to enter temptation. But the reason why most people don't is because they've confused temptation with opportunity. And so we succumb to the temptation. We think, oh wow, what a great opportunity. Turned out it was a track, <laughs> a trip, you know, a track. <laughs> so why does God allow us to be tempted? For the reason of developing the necessary strength and wisdom to overcome and have success over the struggle. When we get tempted, we get caught up in it. And we have to develop strength to come out of it. And we gain this strength when we not choose not to enter temptation. But like with everything else, even if we fail, it leads to good because it brings a needed lesson. The temptation causes suffering and suffering serves to wake us up. So just remember, being tempted is a test. Being in temptation is an ordeal that we must pass through and overcome. And how do you overcome an ordeal? through reason and endurance. Though it's 
possible to endure any temptation. Not all personalities choose to do it. Some mistakenly think by killing their body they will end their suffering. But trials and tribulations are really coming from the emotional mental side of them. So just killing them or killing your body does not kill the cause of that suffering. So, of course, you go, you have a restful period of sleep, you wake up in your psychoanalytic show where the things you don't like are dissipate from you and the things you do like come forward to you. So they enter a kind of rest from that temptation, but then they reincarnate. So they keep reincarnating, they, keep, they have to face those trials. Every trial we have, we have to overcome it or we'll just keep facing it again and again. I, I knew this one psychotherapist and he um, got married seven times. And he said, at the seventh, end of the seventh marriage, he said, I married the same woman seven times. <laughs> <laughs> one was a, a, a church lady, she was strong in the church. One was a stripper. But he found the same woman in each of these people. <laughs> so they keep reincarnating to face these trials, but they've come in disadvantaged. As Dasko said, some of them come in with Down syndrome. Um, you know, suicide rates have increased by 33% in the last 40, 20 years. That's a lot. I think we gave a statistic in the webinar that um, uh, right now there's one every 40 seconds. The World mm -hmm. Health Organization says there's a suicide once every 40 seconds. And in a year, they expect it to be one every 20 seconds. What's happening? What's happening to our world, our, our humans? People are losing hope. People are what? They're losing hope. Yeah. 